This is section 10.2, Calculus with Parametric Curves. So they give us a formula for the derivative of parametric equations. So in order to find dy dx, we need to find dy dt and divide it by dx dt. So for this example, they want us to find an equation, the tangent to the curve, um, corresponding to the given value of the parameter, x equals radical t, at t equal to 4. So what we need to do is we need to find an equation. We can use the point-slope form formula. All right, so we can easily find x1 and x and y1 by plugging in t into the two parametric equations. So let's do that now. So for t equal to 4, we have x equals radical 4, which is 2. And y equals, let's see, that's going to be 8 for y. So our point is going to be 2 comma 8. And for the slope, well, we need to find dy dt and dx dt and divide those two in order to get the slope. So dy dt is going to be 2t minus 2. dx dt is going to be 1 half t to the negative 1 half. All right, and if we find the derivative dy dx, that's going to be dy dt over dx dt. And if we plug in our t, our, our 4 in for t, we're going to get 6 over one fourth, which is 24. And so that is the slope. And so our final answer will be y minus y1 equals 24 times x minus x1. So that would be the point slope form, or we can write that in slope intercept form if we distribute to 24 and add 8, and we would get y equals 24x minus 40 as our final answer. Okay, let's look at the next example. So now they're sh showing us a formula for the second derivative. So the second derivative is going to be the first derivative of the derivative of the first derivative <coughs> divided by dx dt. So for this example, they want us to find first derivative, then the second derivative, and then they want us to determine for what values of t is the curve concave upward. So let's start with d, um, dx dt, which is 2t. Let's do dy dt, which is e to the t. So dy dx is, if you divide those two, you get e to the t over 2t. So that is going to be the first derivative. All right, now for the second derivative, d dt of the derivative of the derivative is uh, divided by dx dt is how we find the second derivative. So in order to find the derivative of this, we're going to have to do the quotient rule. So the quotient rule is going to be uh, the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. So that is a quotient rule. I did the bottom function times the derivative of the top, that's here, minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom, that's here, over the denominator squared. All right, and we still have to divide by dx dt, which is going to be Four, I'm sorry, 2t, 2t, right? Yes, that is a derivative. I'm sorry, dx dt. All right, and now we can actually simplify this expression. We can factor out a 2 and cancel the 2 with that 4. So that's going to become 2, 2, 2. That's going to become a 4. We can actually factor out an e to the t. And so the second derivative will look like this. e to the t t minus 1 over 4t cubed. 
The 4t cubed came because of the 2t squared divided by 2t. That became 4t cubed. And I just factored out the e to the t, and that's how I got t minus 1 for the other factor. All right, so we got the first derivative, we got the second derivative. Now the final part is to determine where the curve is concave upward. In order for that, we need to find where the second derivative is positive. That's how you determine um, when the when the curve is concave upward, when this the second derivative is positive. So in other words, we need to determine when is this going to be greater than or equal to zero. So in order to determine that, we have to um, determine what the zeros are. Well, there's a zero at one. So what I like to do is I like to graph a number line and then it's undefined at zero. So as you can see, if t is zero, it's undefined. So we need to put an open circle there. t cannot be zero. And if t is one, then it's not true. Um, if t is one, then we're gonna get zero, which is not greater than zero. I'm sorry, you're gonna get, yeah, zero, which is not greater than zero. That's a false statement. So this will also be an open circle. So that's what you, that's how you start this off. You determine where is the function um, undefined and where is the function equal to zero. And because it's greater than, then that means an open circle. Then you have three intervals to test. I'm going to test negative one. If you plug in negative one, this is always positive. This would be negative. And if you plug in a negative one here, that's negative two. So you have a negative divided by a negative which is a positive, and that is greater than zero, that is true. So this interval is true. If you plug in a half, this will be positive, positive. This will be negative, positive. So you're gonna have a negative over a positive, which is false. That is false for one half. And finally, for positive two, let's test positive two over here. If you plug in a positive two, you're gonna get positive, 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 which is greater than zero, which is true. All right, so our function will be true for here and for here. So that means that the curve is concave upward, concave upward for t less than zero or for t greater than one. That's where the two intervals on which the curve is concave upward. All right, let's move on to the next example. Find the points on the curve where the tangent is horizontal or vertical. So there's two separate problems here. So horizontal or vertical. First, let's start off by finding the derivative, the dx dt, which is 3t squared minus 3, and dy dt, which is 3t squared minus 6t, and in order for, since the derivative dy dx is equal to dy dt over dx dt, we know that um, the, the curve will be, will have a horizontal, uh, horizontal tangent when, the, when dy dt is zero. When the slope is zero, that means the numerator is zero, so horizontal tangent will occur when the numerator is zero. When dy dt is equal to zero, that is 3t squared minus 6t is equal to zero. We can factor out a 3t and get t minus two. So that will happen when t is zero and t is two. For the vertical tangent, That's gonna happen when dx dt is equal to zero. We can factor out a three and then factor that difference of squares. And so you'll get plus or minus one. So now we need to plug in these t values into the original parametric equations to determine the ordered pairs. So it's gonna have a horizontal tangent at if you plug in zero for t, you're gonna get zero comma 
zero. And if you plug in two for t, you're going to get two comma negative four. So that's, those are the two points at which the curve will have horizontal tangents. And now for vertical tangents, we do the same thing, but now we plug in these two um, t values into the, oops, into the parametric equation. So if you plug in one, let's see, we should get negative two comma negative two. And if you plug in negative one, you will get two comma negative four. And that is how you would do that problem. All right, the next example, they give us a theorem on how to find the arc length of a curve that's described by parametric equations x and y. So this is a arc length formula uh, for parametric equations. So they give us the two parametric equations and they give us the, the domain for t. So the integral will look like this from 0 to 2. First, let's find out what dx dt and dy dt are. This would be e to the t minus 1. dt, um, dy dt is going to be 2e to the t over 2, if you differentiate that. All right, so now we have, since we're going to need to square these, let's square them before we plug them into the formula. If you expand this and square it, you're going to get e to the 2t minus 2e to the t plus 1. And if you square dy dt, you're going to get 4e to the t. So now we have the integral from 0 to 2 of the square root of e to the 2t. Since we're adding these two, as you can tell, if you combine these like terms in the middle, you're going to get positive 2e to the t plus 1. So I've already added these two together. I combined these two like terms. And that's how I came up with that expression. And now this is going to be a perfect square binomial. And we can cancel that square root with the square. And we're going to get the absolute value of e to the t plus 1. But these values are all positive from 0 to 2, so we don't really need the absolute value. We can just change that to parentheses because the function is positive on, on that interval. And so the antiderivative becomes e to the t plus t from 0 to 2, which is going to be e t plus 2, e to the t plus 2 minus 0, e to the 0 is 1, plus 0. And so our final answer would be e to the 2 plus 1 is our final answer. That is the arc length of the curve, parametric curve. And that concludes this section.